right, hey, what's up, guys? It's great to be here with you today. Uh, my name is VJ, and I'm the CEO of Eclipse. Uh, so what is Eclipse? Eclipse is a general purpose layer two that combines the best parts of the modular stack from first principles. So what does that mean? We're taking the speed and scalability of the Solana VM, which we all know well. Uh, we're inheriting the security properties from settling to Ethereum. The liquidity and network effects of ETH as gas token. Uh, so a big part of this is kind of the moneyness of ETH. Uh, and then we're taking the bandwidth and verifiability capabilities of Celestia as the data availability layer, as well as ZK fraud proofs from risk zero. So Eclipse is currently on developer mainnet, which means that we're open for builders, uh, developers, and infra partners like Pith and Backpack to, to integrate with Eclipse. Uh, and I'll talk a bit more about what's next for us. Uh, but I wanted to touch on, you know, why did we choose to use the SVM? Uh, so for me, you know, I've spent the last five years building in Ethereum DeFi, right? So launched DYDX, uh, Uniswap X, which is the RFQ system on Uniswap. Uh, and if you look at the direction that a lot of Ethereum DeFi has gone in, it's increasingly moved compute off-chain. So you've lost a lot of the benefits of liquidity and network effects, transparency and composability that were a big part of the early promise of fully on-chain DeFi. So with the SVM, from day one, it's always been able to support multiple concurrent hotspots capped at 25% of the network. And so you've always been able to have multiple central limit order books, RFQ systems, high throughput consumer and deep pin apps, all coexisting on the same L1 with Solana, right? So unbundling that SVM and, to, and applying it to settlement on Ethereum brings those same capabilities over to the Ethereum user and asset base. And so we're looking to, to kind of share the great capabilities that Solana L1 has always had and bring those to Ethereum users and Ethereum assets. Um, now, Eclipse, uniquely as an L2, can do something that the L1 can't, right? Which is really lean into high throughput and aim for a very high TPS. And that's what we intend on doing, especially with the latest developments from Fire Dancer. Um, you know, I think Eclipse inherits the security of Ethereum, and so we can focus on the qualities of liveness and censorship resistance um, and really lean into what makes Eclipse unique as an L2. Uh, so, that, so that's kind of a lot of the thought process that went into us using the SVM. Uh, and then, of course, when you're talking about uh, language and, and sort of developer awareness of Rust, there's a huge Web2 audience, a great builder base around Rust, and so really providing them an on-ramp to come in and build uh, for Ethereum users and assets as well. So where are we today? So as I mentioned, Eclipse is currently on developer mainnet, uh, and we are currently the number one data user of Celestia. Uh, so by volume of data that's been published in blocks of Celestia, we're at the top of the leaderboard there. Now, of course, a lot of that right now, uh, the, the transaction hashes include additional things like votes um, and a variety of other things that we're looking to really streamline over time, but we think it's a good early data point. Um, and then, of course, as we move to public mainnet, you'll start to see a lot of that be actual transactions. Um, we also have SVM execution with a decentralized sequencer. Uh, so four sequencers with three separate entities and building with forced inclusion as well. So this is a little bit of a reveal that we're doing today, but it's a sneak peek at the Eclipse ecosystem that we've been hard at work partnering with and helping to onboard. Um, so the three main verticals that we're focused on right now are DeFi, fully on-chain DeFi, particularly central mid order books and intent systems, which are high throughput use cases that can really demonstrate the potential of Eclipse. And then consumer, uh, particularly kind of gamified consumer experiences along the lines of, say, a friend tech, which was a great early example in that space. And then lastly is infrastructure. Uh, so you can see the, the Oracle and uh, the wallet partners that we're working with, among others, as well as the RPCs. And then we're also working with a handful of deep end projects uh, to expand it to the Ethereum user base. Um, you know, a few names to highlight here on the DeFi side. So excited to bring on Orca, 
the leading AMM on Solana L1, uh, Solend, which is rebranded as Save, uh, so leading Bar Lend protocol, as well as uh, Mango, which is doing a relaunch in partnership with Manifest, which is a rebuild of OpenBook, uh, which we're super excited about. So excited too for users and, and, and all of you guys here to be able to access these apps in the coming weeks as we head to public mainnet. So I wanted to hone in a bit on DeFi on Eclipse, right? In particular, what we're doing with liquid restaking tokens. Uh, so we built what we think is kind of a unique, best in class and pioneering experience around that, which centers around a unified ETH restaking token, uh, which you know, we're calling URT for short. Um, and we're hoping to bring this same capability over to Solana LRTs as well, uh, or Sol LRTs. Um, and so the goal is to make Eclipse the home for LRT5. Obviously, there's a ton of activity around this right now, both in Ethereum and Solana. And we think if we can help to aggregate the yield opportunities around both these asset bases, that's a very interesting value proposition for users out there and something that uh, it doesn't really exist right now, right? For those of you who were around for the DeFi summer of 2020, um, you know, Yearn was, was kind of this yield aggregator. So we're building the same experience for LRT assets on Eclipse. Uh, so we've launched the ETH URT, uh, and then we're in the process of working on a version for Sol as well. And so excited to combine that to, to create some interesting opportunities around Sol and ETH DeFi. So what's next? Uh, so I'm sure a lot of you have seen Vitalik's tweet around raising the bar for, for L2s on Ethereum, right? So this is something that we take extremely seriously at Eclipse. Uh, so as part of that road to building a trustless L2, uh, the next features in the roadmap are to build trustless deposits with chain derivation, fraud proofs with forced inclusion, like I mentioned earlier, and then a sequencer rotation protocol with governance as well. And just to hone in on this point, like I was saying, Eclipse as an L2 can really lean into a much higher TPS, potentially even than Solana L1 can over the long term, right? And this is something that we're very focused on. And working with a single rotating sequencer is a way to achieve this, right? Or what we call thick or beefy sequencers. Uh, and so our vision and goal over the long term is to bring high throughput DeFi and consumer back on chain. Right, in Ethereum, a lot of that has moved off chain and we want to bring those same capabilities that Solana's had back to Ethereum users and assets. And then we're also focused on onboarding mainstream and institutional users with the best in class UX and product experiences, right? This is no surprise to most of you in this room, uh, but the one thing that we're particularly excited about is being able to bring a unique block explorer experience to Eclipse as well that we're hoping to give back to Solana L1 as, um, and something that we're excited about. Um, and then lastly, public mainnet is coming in October. Uh, so towards the end of October, we're excited to start rolling out uh, a lot of the front ends and start talking about the app experiences that are launching. And then what's next for Eclipse after that? It's, it's implementing Fire Dancer. So thank you guys.